Thank you for the introduction. Um, so, um, if you had uh, Elke, I'm from Lima, Peru, and as a good Peruvian and a proud Peruvian, I want to start this presentation with ceviche. And this is a Facebook post of one of Laboratoria's graduates that says, coming back, but in other circumstances. Punto Azul, which is a local cevicheria in Lima, was my first job after school. Now I come back with Kenny in our lunch break from work. And I'm showing you this not because of ceviche, but because this is the transformation we are trying to create in Laboratoria. And Laboratoria exists to give Latin American women from underserved backgrounds a career in tech that transforms their future. And I first want to start talking to you about why do we do this. And we do this because we, have, we, want to, we try to solve two problems that for us are at the same time opportunities. And in Latin America, more than 40 million of young women are not studying, not working, or working in their formal sector. And this represents an immense pool of talent that is just being wasted. And on the other hand, we have the tech sector, in which we found a huge talent and diversity gap. A huge talent gap because, as we have been talking during this whole event, technology is growing exponentially day by day. And there are a lot of, of talent needed there. Uh, the IDB says that in 2025, we're going to need more than 1.2 million software developers in Latin America. And according to Cisco, in 2019, so next year, we're going to have more than 450,000 empty job positions due to the lack of talent just in Latin America. And on top of that, there is a diversity gap because less than 10% of developers are women in Latin America. And I want to reflect a little bit more on why we have this gender gap. And this is a graphic that shows the proportion of US computer science students in 1995. And it's not perfect, but it was better than we, that we are now. It was 60% men and 30% women. So how do we end up like we are today? And I think if we see these images, we might have find the answer. Because we have been told that the tech sector is for men. And sadly, the reality is still the same today. Because if you Google developer, if you search developer in Google, this is what you'll find out. And it's a field for men. So it's not a surprise that in 2014, this was the proportion of US computer science students among, uh, according to, to their gender. And the thing is that the percentage of women in technology have been dropping systematically since 1991. Since 1991 yeah. And the problem with this is that this gender gap has a huge impact in the products and in the technology that is out on the market. And I want to share with you some examples. Like the first airbags, who were significantly less effective with women and children bodies because those were designed by men who only considered their own body proportions. Or the first, app, uh, the first help, health app in the iPhone that um, could track a lot of body functions and, uh, and the health of the person, but guess which uh, thing it couldn't track? This, the menstrual cycle. Because, and and it's, it's, it's incredible because the menstrual cycle is something that all women, which are half of the population, we have every month for the most part of our lives. Or the voice recognition software that work significantly better for male voices. And the problem with this is that if we want products and technology that serve for men and women as well, we need to have women in the teams that are creating and developing this technology. 
So we are trying to bring a new approach and a different approach to technical education. And our impact model starts with a selection process. We start identifying where are these women that have the drive and the potential to work in the digital sector, but they just didn't have the opportunities. And then through a six-month training bootcamp, we train them as web developers and software designers. And after that, we connect them with companies that are in need of their talent, uh, where they can launch a life-changing career. On average, our graduates triple their, their incomes, and we only ask them to pay for the training they received once they get a job and their income has increased. So what makes us different? And the first thing, of course, is the different talent. We are bringing diverse talent to the industry. And I think the most difficult task we have is looking for talent and potential, because we're trying to predict who are the women that can be successful in our program and that then uh, can, be can be successful in the tech industry. And we are also trying to bring innovation to education, which is one of the fields that have changed less with technology. And I love to show this image because we think that this is the real problem with education. And this is how someone many years ago imagined that education would look like in the future. And the thing is that for us, it couldn't be the opposite. Um, we want to change from a model of education that is centered in the teacher as the one who has all the knowledge that has to share with the, with the students to the students as, as, active and, as active individuals that are in charge of their own learning process. And our way to do that uh, has been to bring the agile values from the agile software to our classroom. And we have called it, of course, the Agile Classroom. And the Agile Classroom is um, just an emphasis in autonomy over control, in feedback over grades, in teamwork over competition, in the failure as the way of learning, and a retrospective as the way to, to achieve constant improvement. And we are also trying to innovate in, in a, a different kind of placement. We are trying to reduce the company's effort, cost, and time invested in finding the talent they need. And we are gathering all the data, not only from the selection process, but through the training, because we really get to know well our students. And we are trying to use this data to do a perfect match between companies and, and graduates. We do have a talent app today that is in an MVP version. Uh, but we are trying to use machine learning to, to do a better match, like I was telling you. And we also have the talent fests that are hackathons where companies pay to participate and to bring a real challenge. And then we assign them a squad of four or five students that is going to solve this challenge in 36 hours. And the most, I mean, the, the most important benefit is not the MVP but the opportunity to access a pool of talent of more than 100 developers and designers at the same time and to watch them work side by side with your team and to reduce the hiring process for maybe two or three months to two or three days. And our vision is to become the source of female tech talent from Latin America to leading companies around the globe. And when we started Laboratoria in 2015, we were practically begging every contact we had in agencies or startups to hire our talent. But then in 2016, my awesome boss, CEO, and co-founder of Laboratoria was in a panel with Barack Obama and Mark Zuckerberg. And we received a lot of attention in, in, in Latin America. And so we, we started to, to um, receive the answers from bigger companies. And today, we have graduates working in big software factories like ThoughtWorks, like IBM, like Everest, like Accenture, and also in big corporations that are going through a digital transformation process, which are pretty much all of them today. And we have graduates in Scotiabank, in the IDV, in Walmart. And while working with these companies, we noticed that they were kind of lost of how to embrace and how to accelerate this digital transformation process. And I love to show this image because I feel this is how 
many of the companies of Latin America and maybe in many other places of the world are right now. They are doing their business as usual without really noticing that there is a huge digital wave that is going to sink them if they don't realize what is going on and if they don't change the way they are working today. And doing some research, uh, we found out that last year, SAP uh, did this research where they found that only 50% of companies believe their employees have the necessary skills for digital transformation. So we did an MVP with a close company back in 2016. Um, to share the way we work, the way we as entrepreneurs with limited resources work and the mindset we bring, which is a lean startup mindset. And it was quite a success, and we have been training since then and giving courses a lot of, uh, to a lot of companies. And we are, of course, talking about uh, all these words that we hear all the time about design thinking and in UX and agile and growth hacking. But we are actually talking more about that digital transformation is actually people. And it's about the culture, and it's about the mindset that the people in your company have. And at the end, we are doing all of this because we are trying to create a more diverse and inclusive industry. And we are doing that by training the upper management and changing the mindset there, because that is, at the end of the day, it's going to open more uh, job positions in the entry level where we place our graduates, and our graduates are also bringing another mindset to a company and pushing in this direction of the pyramid. And these are our results. We have five training centers across Latin America. We have a training center in Lima, in Santiago de Chile, in Ciudad de México, in Guadalajara, and in Sao Paulo. We have more than 800 graduates. Uh, we have a placement rate of 80%. And on average, our students, our graduates, triple their income. We have more than 250 hiring companies and more than 30 companies that we have given uh, courses to them and, and more than 2,000 corporate students. And this, of course, wouldn't have been possible with our leading global partners who actually uh, are some of the big players in, in the tech uh, industry and, and in education, too. So thank you. Thank you.